Okay, so in this video we're going to be looking at drawing angles in standard position on a Cartesian plane. A Cartesian plane has a y-axis and an x-axis and it's basically the same thing that we use to draw parabolas and graph straight lines. But when you start to draw triangles on a Cartesian plane we start to notice a few interesting uh, patterns. But first let's look at some terminology. First off, when we draw triangles on a Cartesian plane, one corner of the triangle will be at the origin point zero, zero. We also have an initial arm along the x-axis right here, and we also have what's called a terminal arm. The terminal arm can be anywhere, really. It can be here, or we can have a terminal arm here or here, and it's, it's the part of the triangle that rotates around to be in either of the four quadrants. We also have uh, what's called a reference angle, or theta r. Theta r is essentially the angle from between the x-axis and the terminal arm. So here our theta r is 20 degrees, and between here it's also 20 degrees, and between for this line to be mirrored or the same, the reference angle will be 20 degrees in all four triangles. But we also have to look at angles in standard position. Now angles in standard position are just angles from the initial arm on the x-axis here to the terminal arm wherever it is, regardless of which quadrant it is in. So here our standard position angle is only 20 degrees, but in this one instead of our standard position angle being 20 degrees, it's this angle right here from the initial arm to the terminal arm, and we find this to be 160 degrees. And then if we look at this arm, we find this to be 200 degrees. And this arm we find to be 360 degrees minus 20 degrees is 340 degrees. There, that, and that is our standard position angle. But our reference angle is still 20 degrees. Now, when we graph things on a Cartesian plane, we find that we have different ratios um, instead of so, ka, and toa. It's still the same formula, but we find that we're left with sine theta in this quadrant. Sine theta equals y over r cos theta equals x over r and tan theta equals y over x. And a lot of times uh, in these Cartesian planes, the radius, or the hypotenuse, will always be equal to 1, and so we can simplify these and have sine theta just equals y, and it makes these calculations a lot easier. And remember that these ratios will still be different here. But another problem that graphing on a Cartesian plane represents is negative x and y values, because if we go to this quadrant, we have positive y values, but we also have to deal with negative x values. So we find that, well, all values here, a, all are positive, there are some values here that will be negative. For example, cos theta is now equal to negative x over r, so cos theta is negative. However, sine theta, which is y over r, will not be negative because y is still positive. And tan theta is also equal to y over negative x. So the only thing that will be positive here is sine ratio. And then we look in this quadrant and we find that both x is negative and y is negative, so the only thing that will be positive is our tan theta is a positive value because two negatives cancel out, and we're just left with our original equation here. So here, tan is positive. And in this quadrant, with our negative y value but a positive x value, we find that our sine, or sorry, our cos value is the only positive value. A shortcut to remembering this is CAST, cast. In this, in the fourth quadrant, all cos ratios are positive, and so on and so forth. A being all, S being sine, and T being tan. And this is helpful to remember um, when we have to find exact values, and we can use what's called special triangles to find these exact values. Now, special triangles are basically triangles that have set angles and a set ratio of side lengths. And we can use these side lengths to find uh, exact values for cos, tan, and sine ratios. 
So we know that cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so if we have a theta here is 1 over root 2. And this is a lot more exact than writing out 1 over 1.41 dot 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 dot. And this gives us what's called exact values, and it's helpful for engineering and mathematics because when you're building a bridge, you don't want to be say just say 1 over 1.4. You want as many decimal places as you possibly can to be as accurate as you possibly can. And it's just good to remember these. A trick I like to use for the 30, 60, 90 triangle to remember is that the smaller the angle, the smaller the opposite side length. So example here, 30 degrees is opposite 1, while 60 is opposite root 3, and root 3 is 1.7, and it's smaller than 2, and 90 is opposite 2. So as your angle increases, your opposite side length increases. And that's just a helpful trick for remembering special triangles to help you find exact angles on a Cartesian plane.